Hi, and welcome to Coming to Terms with AI. Amiri Bleicher, the social media manager at Coco Hub. Up until recently, I had absolutely zero knowledge when it comes to conversational AI, chatbots, and voice. I need help. During this show, I'll be asking industry leaders to explain terms, ideas, and co concepts in the field in the way that will make sense to you. And if it makes sense to me, there's a good chance it will make sense to you. So today I turn to Dr. Nava Shaked, an AI expert at Gillis Information Systems and a science faculty member at HIT, Poulon Institute of Technology. Hi, Nava. Hi, Miri. So can you tell me about machine learning in conversational AI? Okay, so the, the term definition of machine learning is a methodology enabling a machine or a computer to acquire uh, knowledge and information from data relatively independently, even automatically. Later, this can be used for several cognitive operations. So if the machine learned really well, it can even make predictions, which is what we aspire for. So it's basically the machine learning by itself? So we need to put all of this in context. So let's start from what I am doing on my everyday uh, job, and then maybe we can go to explain more deeply about um, about the area. So I'm a computational linguist, which means I work uh, on teaching or making it's possible for machines to interact with humans via dialogue uh, based on speech or text. So what I'm doing is really um, making sure the machine knows as much as possible about language and about human interaction. In order to do that, we go to artificial intelligence to assist us with this operation. And really when we talk about artificial intelligence, there are so many terms that it's really confusing and no wonder that you are in a limbo. Uh, artificial intelligence is the area that works with or make possible, makes possible for computers to simulate human thinking and human processing. We're talking about features that uh, enables machines to analyze, to build, to uh, perform a process which is sometimes long and meaningful of self, self learning to understand information uh, or language interaction in the deepest sense, meaning to analyze text in a very intelligent way, to communicate, to make communication between people in a way that understand mood and tone and even social interaction and personal, uh, uh, personal issues as references stuff that is really, really even difficult for us as humans to perform. And all these little components of language are something we are trying to teach the machine. Now, today, computers are really good, fast, and able to perform unbelievable tasks. But sometimes they are unable to do things that even babies, in terms of language, that babies can do, uh, from identifying who is talking to understanding uh, colloquial or slang uh, by learning from mistakes or understanding references in conversation, drawing conclusions. There are many things that people do really naturally and, and easy, but for the computer, it is still very hard. So here comes machine learning, which is again, a methodology which enables us to acquire these cognitive abilities. Like a person learns from experience, the machine will learn from the data that we are giving it. Mm -hmm. And as people are learning by experience, and we know that there is, all, there is a cognitive module in everybody's, um, you know, in our mind when we are born, it's, it's genetic. Nevertheless, the exposure to language, the experience is something that is developing our language or, this, or, or starting our mechanism of learning. So 
with machine learning, it's about the data. It's always depend on the data, which means the quality of the learning depends on the quality of the data. If the data is good, and we'll discuss this in a minute, if the data is good, the learning procedure and the outcomes will be good. But if the data is bad or is not enough or is not representative of a real, truly appropriate data, then we might have a problem and the, the, the conclusions, the predictions will not suffice. So this is, this is very important to understand um, because machine learning is, is the methodology requires uh, you to have the data and the question is how do you get the data? And here I open parentheses every day when we Google something, when we go on Facebook, when we buy something on Amazon, all this is data that is being acquired and then used in machine learning. So we need to remember this and we need to understand that as much as we produce data, this data is being used for learning some kind of cognitive operation. Amazing. What is good data in this? So it really depends on what is our task. And uh, uh, we usually, when we talk about machine learning, we talk about two methodologies that has to do with data. One is called uh, supervised learning, and the other one is the unsupervised learning, and that makes a big difference. Uh, supervised learning means that we are using data that we know. We know what it's in, what inside. It even can be a tagged data. So when uh, we are using, we already know maybe the topic of the data, we know its components, we know which uh, words will be more frequently used in this data. Um, uh, we are uh, using uh, data that was maybe tagged before, Okay, this is uh, data that we know what, and then the whole process is supervised. When we talk about unsupervised learning, we talk about data that we have collected sporadically. We have no idea what's inside. And part of it is to try and use the, the, the different algorithms in order to make some kind of sense of what is it that we got. So we try to group data by looking for similar properties, by similar behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, this is called clustering. Mm -hmm. We're trying to create clustering based on similarities. Yes, groups of something, okay? We have no idea. So what we do is kind of iterative process mm -hmm. a, a few times that can, uh, uh, that can eventually, eventually create some kind of clustering, which we will then test. So some, <clears throat> sorry, sometimes the, the methodology is to start with, un, when you start with unsupervised learning, we are doing something to make it more clear into clustering, and then we move it into the supervised learning level where we are trying to figure out now uh, exactly some kinds of predictions about the data. So there are, uh, and, and for each of these, uh, and for each of these processes, we are di different mathematical algorithms which depend on the data that you, we are using. Data means text, it can be video, speech, uh, some kind of uh, voices which are not speech, images, of course, uh, numbers. All that, which is called, it's multi-model information needs to be processed. And there's so much of it now going on there. So we are producing, we are a factory of data. Uh, if you want to combine different data, this is also a challenge. You want to teach the machine by combining different data together. And when you combine the data, you are actually enhancing, meaning, you have some kind of prediction based on one data, you enhance it with data from another type. This is very interesting, not at all simple, not at all simple. And this is before we started to talk about different languages, the, the fusion of, of different kinds of things that we have to match together. 
So it's important to also say, when we talk about artificial intelligence, it's a continuum. It's not one thing. It's a, it's a full, uh, you know, it's, it's something very big that has different uses, areas, uh, uh, capabilities from our, uh, from our um, ro uh, it's a cleaning robot at home, which has some kind of knowledge how to go back to its uh, uh, electrical source or to map the, your house, which is a lower level of AI, to the uh, very sophisticated chatbots and NLP-based robots and social robots that can serve you and interact with you and sense and, 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 and produce emotions and understand emotions, which is like the top of the line of artificial intelligence. And we have also expert systems, which are used to build things, to manufacture, they imitate. Uh, we talk a lot about RPA today, uh, automatic systems that are used for production and used for, um, uh, for um, uh, enhancing uh, uh, manufacturing uh, procedures, all of it is part of it. So really when we go into this world, there's so much we need to discover, but we need to understand that we're talking about methodologies of handling knowledge, arranging knowledge and making the best out of it. It's amazing. It's like magic. It's, uh, it's just, it's, it's the methodology of the way it's so, it's, it's mind blowing, you know, it's, it's really, I'm so, I feel like uh, very lucky that you explained this to us. I feel like we only touched the little iceberg of it. We touched the very, very beginning of it and there is so much to, to discuss more, but it's very essential that when people discuss it, they understand the basic terms. Amazing, wow, thank you so much. I really, it's, uh, I think one of the best episodes uh, we've had. Thank you for participating and you out there, thank if you, you have- Thank you for inviting. Thank you. And guys, if you have questions or anything, reach out, we're all here. Thank you, tune in next time. Bye. Bye.